dazzling. That's the word for Jackson Pollock's painting titled Mural. In the view of many scholars, it's the painting that established Pollock as the world's leading modern painter. But does the painting hold a secret? That's what I discovered while I was writing a new book on Jackson Pollock titled Tom and Jack, which explores Pollock's relationship with his teacher, Thomas Hart Benton. Pollock had wanted to make a great mural since he first arrived in New York in 1930 and posed for Thomas Hart Benton's great mural, America Today. But he didn't get a chance to make one until 1943, when the wealthy art collector Peggy Guggenheim commissioned him to paint a mural for the entrance hall of her New York apartment. In 1948, when she moved to Venice, Italy, she gave the painting to the University of Iowa, after Yale University turned it down. Fortunately, it survived a recent flood at the University of Iowa, which pretty much destroyed the museum. Today, it's valued at over $150 million, which is more than the average American earns in 5,000 years. The design of Pollock's mural follows principles that Benton published in 1926 in an article on abstract composition. The forms move around vertical poles. But how did Pollock organize his shapes? When I saw these letters, it was truly an aha moment. It wasn't something that I was fishing for. I saw the kind of thing that you see when you're reading. You see a letter, then you see a space, a letter and a space. When I took a look at this thing upside down, I saw the S-O-N pop out at me. Then I saw the P and Pollock, the capital P. The big tall L's that really almost bisect the painting are in the center as sort of an anchor. The S has this marvelous flourish. You have flourishes on the J, you have flourishes on the P's. And once I saw it, I can't not see it anymore. Animals have been using camouflage for millions of years. That's how a poisonous copperhead snake disappears in autumn leaves. But the principles of camouflage weren't clearly understood until 1909, when they were analyzed by an American painter, Abbott Thayer. Thayer's discoveries were soon turned to military purposes. In World War I, Pollock's teacher, Thomas Hart Benton, and many other American artists worked with camouflage. Today, it's often used for military garb. And even Andy Warhol played with camouflage in a series of late self-portraits. What's odd about camouflage is that faint patterns stand out from their background, and strong patterns disappear. For example, it's a zebra's stripes that will make it disappear into the background. If it didn't have stripes, you could see it clearly. Jackson Pollock's painting is so dazzling that it's hard to make out the letters all at once. You need to visually trace them one by one. Pollock once told a friend that he didn't have the technical ability to make a great realistic mural like Benton and needed to do something different. I think that by making the name Jackson Pollock so central to the design, he was announcing that he was replacing Thomas Hart Benton as the greatest American painter. I guess that was Pollock's way of making a name for himself. Mm -hmm.